Hey everybody, welcome back to Grandma's Corner 2020 for yet another story. Well, look at all my friends we have here. We have gathered quite the collection of young people, animals, friends, who want to hear my story. So how lucky am I? So today we're going to read The Bernstein Bears Trouble at School. Have you ever gotten in trouble at school before? Well, if you did, it probably was a misunderstanding or maybe you just didn't make a good choice or maybe somebody provoked you. So we're gonna find out what the Bernstein Bears do in their situation. The Bernstein Bears trouble at school. Though brother and sister bear were usually very healthy, they occasionally caught cold. So when brother bear came from school one day sneezing and wheezing, mama bear knew just what to do. She took his temperature, tucked him into bed, and went right to the phone and called Dr. Grizzly. Sneezing and wheezing and temperature of 101, said Dr. Grizzly. Keep him in bed, give him plenty of liquids, and keep him home from school until his temperature is back to normal. Mama followed the doctor's orders, and little by little, brother's temperature began to go down. I feel a little better, he said. May I get out of bed? I'm afraid not, said Mama. The doctor wants you to stay in bed. But there's no reason why your stay shouldn't be as pleasant as possible, Papa said, she called. Would you bring up the portable TV? The portable had remote control and pretty soon Brother was having a fine time switching from one cartoon show to another. When he tired of TV, he got out of his got out his comic books, and when he tr tired of those, Mama brought him his dinosaur collection. There was no doubt about it. Except for his sniffles, Brother Bear was having a pretty good time. So when Sister Bear brought him a folder of schoolwork for him, he hardly looked at it. He was much too busy having fun. But while he was at home having fun, his fellow school students at school were hard at work. In the classroom where teacher Bob was teaching a new math lesson, they had learned to add, subtract, and multiply. And now they were learning to divide. On the soccer field where Coach Bruin was getting the team ready for the big game against Beartown, Cousin Freddy, he called, take brother's places at forward. He's out sick. Yes, sir, said Freddy. This was the chance he had been waiting for. It wasn't until Brother was all better and ready to go back to school that he remembered the folder of work. Oh, well, he thought, I'll study it on the bus. But that's where he heard about Freddy and the soccer team. He was so upset, he forgot all about studying. When Coach Bruin had extra practice during early gym, Brother became even more upset. It wasn't easy watching Freddy take his place on the team. Then, when Brother got back to class, Teacher Bob said, I certainly hope you studied that work folder because we're going to have a quiz. A quiz, said Brother. On what? On division, of course, said Teacher Bob as he handed out the quiz papers. Brother might have managed even then. He was good with numbers and might have worked through them, through them out if only he had been able to concentrate. But all he could think about was Cousin Freddie out there kicking field goals while he sat on the bench. The quiz was a disaster. Not only did Brother get every problem wrong, but Teacher Bob wrote on the paper, very poor, must be signed by parent. 
brother didn't know which was worse, the soccer mess or the quiz disaster. What would he say to Mama and Papa when they asked how things had gone at school? He was so busy feeling sorry for himself on the bus ride home that he didn't even notice that Sister was coming down with a bad case of the sneezes and coughs. Oh dear, said Mama when she saw Sister. You've caught Brother's cold. Into bed with you, she said. And she and Papa were so busy attending to Sister that they forgot to ask Brother how things were at school. And he didn't tell them. He has kind of a guilty face, doesn't he? <clears throat> Excuse me. And the next morning when the school bus came, brother didn't get on the bus. He hid in the tall grass until the bus was out of sight. The squirrels and bluebirds were puzzled. Brother was usually happy and cheerful, but not this morning. This morning he looked unhappy and angry too. Phooey, brother shouted, kicking a stone. But kicking the stone reminded him of soccer, and that just made him angrier. The bluebirds took off, and the squirrels scattered. Phooey on soccer, he shouted, stamping off through the woods. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Grasshoppers hopped. Toads stood stock still and pretended that they were bumps on the log. Phooey on school, brother shouted, stomping out of the woods. Pansies hid their faces. Ladybugs flew away home. And, he said, reaching into a school bag, Phooey on division. He had come to the top of the big hill. He took out the quiz, folded it into a paper airplane, and sailed it high into the sky. The hill overlooked a swampy, overgrown bog. As brother watched the quiz circle and swoop, he noticed something out of the corner of his eye. A familiar house at the edge of the bog. A bog is a very wet marshy area where plants grow and there's lots of water and frogs and water animals like to live near bogs. Grizzly Gramps was working on a ship model when he heard the, do the knock. Gran was making cookies. They weren't expecting visitors and they certainly weren't expecting brother, especially during school hours. It didn't take long for the whole story to come out. Gramps and Gran listened quietly as brother told them about catching cold, the folder of work, the soccer mess, the quiz disaster, the miss bus, and the paper airplane. Come with me, young fellow, said Gramps. I want to show you something. Gramps took brother by the hand and led him deep into the bog. There, he said, that's what I want to show you. It was a very old wagon sank almost out of sight in a muddy pond. How did that get there? asked brother. It wasn't easy, said Gramps. I went to a lot of trouble getting that old wagon into this swamp. Then with a twinkle in his eye, he said, just the way you did getting in over your head at school. It happened a long time ago when I took a wrong turn, just the way you did when you didn't study that schoolwork that Teacher Bob sent home. Well, instead of admitting my mistake and backing up, I just pushed ahead until I was in so deep there was no getting out. And you lost the wagon, said brother. Yep, said Gramps. But I learned a valuable lesson. If you find yourself on the wrong road, don't keep going on that road until you're in over your head. Back up and start over on the right road. How am I going to do that, asked brother. Oh, I think you can manage. But first look over there, Gramps said, pointing. There it was, the paper airplane, caught in a heavy bush. What do you think they'll, they'll, what do you think they'll say? Asked brother later as they bounced along in grandpa's 
pickup? Well, we're going to find out soon enough, said Gramps, pulling to a stop in front of the big tree house. And let's not forget Gran's bag of cookies. They're her finest. Mama and Papa weren't exactly pleased when they heard about the big mess Brother had gotten himself into, but they didn't holler and pound the table either, not even Papa. He looked like he might be going to when he saw the paper he had to sign. Gramps had tried to flatten it out, but it was still pretty wrinkled. What happened to this? he asked. Oh, said Gramps, um, it's just sort of got folded a bit. That's when he brought out Gran's cookies, and there were ten of them. Let's see now, he said. There are five of us counting sister. So how many cookies do we each get? Two, of course, said Brother, dividing them up. Now look now, young feller, said Gramps with a wink, but you just divided ten by five. Is that all there is to dividing, said Brother? That's all, said Gramps. Come along, said Mama, in a no-nonsense voice. Where are we going, asked Brother. To school, Mama said, as they got in the car. But it's so late, protested Brother. It's never too late to correct a mistake, Mama said. And off they went. Brother got to class just in time for a retest. The class hadn't done very well on the division quiz, so Teacher Bob was giving them a second chance. Brother really concentrated, and he did much better. And that afternoon, he got a second chance at soccer, too. It was the day of the big game against Beartown, and things were not going very well. Brother, said Coach Bruin, I want you to go in for Freddie. I don't think he's quite ready for first team. Glad to help, Coach, Brother said as he ran out onto the field. You know what they say, it's never too late to correct a mistake. So there you go. He ended up having a really good reason for not going to school, but then ended up enjoying not being in school, got kind of lazy and didn't do what he was supposed to be doing, didn't own up to his responsibilities, and he got himself into a little pickle. But with good guidance from his grandparents and his parents, he was been able to get back on track again and do the right thing. And he's doing great. So lesson learned, everybody. If you get off track, just get right back on and all will be good. So you have a good day. Thank you for joining us. I'm already in my nighttime gear, ready for some snoozing. How about you guys? I think they're ready too. So ta-ta for now. Thank you for subscribing. And I'll catch you next time when we're going to read Miguel and the Amazing Alabrijes. This has to do with the movie Coco and Dia de los Muertos. So get excited, I am. So ta-ta for now. Bye-bye.